What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. Now, I recently just treated myself to a brand new camera that I've got just mounted behind my monitor there. This is the Panasonic Lumix S5. I wanted a full frame camera for a while and I really couldn't pass up on the Black Friday deals that were going on this camera. When I tell you for the price I got it for at the end of the video, it is just the bang for buck on this thing is incredible. Now, I was previously a Panasonic user just about a year and a half ago. Um, I had the Lumix G9 and G7 and I sold them both and I switched over to Sony. So I first started off with the A6400 and treated myself to some lenses and I then added the ZV-E10 to the mix as well. And the reason I left was because of autofocus. Less so much on face tracking, which is what I'm going to show you how to do today, how you can get sort of perfect face tracking autofocus on this camera. And more because of I do a lot of unboxings, you know, some products that you open, you literally get one shot at it. And the amount of times that that G9 was just hunting whilst I was trying to show it, you know, just something small or a little bit of cable or something. It was really stressing me out. So I was very concerned when I bought this camera, but from initial assessments, and I've set that to be a bit slower as well, focusing as I come forward and back. It's very, it's really improved. It's still contrast detection autofocus. It's still got its flaws. And I ain't gonna try and, you know, do this video and saying like it's better than Sony's. But for anyone that is looking to buy this camera, um, if it's something that you're concerned about and you're doing talking headshots like me, I wanna show you all the things that you can do to real, really nail in the autofocus. So let's talk about face tracking autofocus. But before we start, I do wanna say that this camera does offer clean HDMI out. Um, if anyone was concerned that they couldn't use this for streaming or anything, I have just turned the info display on so I can show you everything on screen. And then this way I don't have to get loads of separate B-roll. Um, so that saves me a little bit of time. But as you can see, we've got face tracking autofocus on, but it's not quite set up yet. So to obviously to get this on in the first place, if you're new to this camera um, on the back, there is the focusing button and you just press that and select face tracking. Great. We're done, right? You can see we've got the square around my face. We've got it tracking my eye. You know, it's almost there. It's yes, it is tracking, but it's not locked on. And to lock it on, there are sort of two ways that you can do this. So firstly, you can press the joystick next to the focusing dial on the back and that will lock it on or you can use the touch screen and it doesn't matter how close you get to the camera for this. So I'm just going to touch it. And as you can see there, now what we have is these four like intersects um, around the orange box around my face and this is now tracked on and locked on to me. Now it's not perfect if you go out of frame, let's give it a little test. As you can see, it lost me there. So I'll press it back on again. If I just do a quick down and out, then as you can see, it tracks back onto my face. But yeah, if you are constantly moving out of frame, then you are gonna have to press it afterwards. Maybe if you had to pick something up off your floor, like a product or something that you're gonna show to someone, then yeah, it's probably worth pressing it again. But that is how you set up proper face tracking. Now, before I show you the AF speed and drive settings, I think it is really important to talk about manual focus, even though this is sort of a face tracking autofocus video. Manual focus is something that I wouldn't be scared of if you don't really use it. If you're doing a talking headpiece, um, it's probably the best way to go because you're not going to have things like focus breathing and stuff moving around in the background. Your scene is going to stay exactly as it should do. Um, you know, you're not going to have a suddenly turn your head around and turn back and then the whole thing's going to hunt and refocus like this can happen even on the best of cameras. Do you know what I mean? Even on my Sony cameras. Now, one thing you can see on here is there's like red around me. What's this red stuff? These like artifacts. This is called focus peaking. So it's going to tell me that I am in focus. I really wish it was stronger on the um, Lumix on the all Panasonic cameras, if I'm honest, because it was the same when I had my G9. So when I have something like the ZV-E10 in manual focus on me, my entire beard is lit up red and I get red under my eyes there. So if I come in a little bit or go back a little bit, it's very easy for me to refocus myself, even just by looking at the small flip screen. This flip screen, for example, I've got some red on my eyes, but the red on my eyes, it stays for a bit. Do you know what I mean? So all I can see is these tiny little red dots up there. Now, another cool feature as well is when you actually adjust your focus, if you do it manually, as you can see here, that is, you know, bringing a larger version of me and I'm in focus. But because I'm going back a few inches, I know I've just got to turn it, turn it around a little bit more and then I'll just do a little touch more. And then hopefully, yeah, it's mostly there. I don't really, 
I look like a freaking South Park Canadian like that. But there is another cooler trick that you can do. So as you can see, I'm not in focus here. And then I've got the app on my phone and I'm going to press the AF button on it. Oh, and look at that. And then I come back and then I press the AF button on it again. And this is called manual focus assist and it's built into pretty much all cameras on the Sony one. I literally just have to touch on my face on the app. You can press it on the screen, but the problem is going to be if you press it on the screen, you need to reach forward. So then you need to refocus yourself So definitely install the app. Let's just do that again. I'm just going to press the AF button on the remote control and we're back. Bang, back in. So this is going to be perfect if you're just talking, um, just doing a talking headpiece where you've got lots of B-roll. If you're going to be picking up products and coming forward and doing lots of stuff and going into frame, like it will work, but you just need to center yourself, you know, and then, oh, it's gone there. Look at that. And then press the button on the app and start again. But you can do that with cuts and stuff as well. Let me just do one last go on that. But yeah, some really great manual focus features that can assist you and help you get working with manual focus right then time to dial in those af speed and sensitivity settings now this is going to vary on a couple of things firstly it's going to vary on the picture profile that you're on so i'm on the natural profile today remember this is contrast detection autofocus so because we've got lots of contrast in our scene it's going to work a bit better than it when it's in vlog that being said i'm new to vlog i had a little mess around with it last night i was more you know worrying about exposing it and just playing with some LUTs and getting some color on there but I found that I didn't really need to change it that much. I didn't really need to mess around with my settings that much for vlog. But um, if you're using a different picture profile and you're taking my settings and tweaking them, let me know in the comment section because I really do want to start playing around with some of those more, you know, loggy profiles and flat profiles going forward. But essentially in the AF settings, you have one for speed and you have one for sensitivity. Now, because I'm taking this from a talking head perspective, I'm going to show you the settings for that. I'm also going to show you the settings if you were moving around a little bit as well. But the thing is, what you need to remember is right now, although I'm moving around a little bit and I'm animated, I am static. Really, my focal length from the lens in the frame is staying the same. I'm not doing a lot of this. I'm not doing a lot of that. I just want to talk and present and, you know, get my content out there in the position that I feel comfortable. And I'm, this is the position where I am comfortable. So the first one is AF speed then. So for this, you want to set it to somewhere between minus one, well, zero and minus three. The reason for this is I'll turn the AF speed up for you now. And this is the problem with demos because it's now not doing what I wanted, but it's doing it a little bit as you can see how as I move forward and back a little bit. Can you see it's just really, look at R2, wrong side, look at R2D2. It's just a bit blurry over there. You're not gonna notice it as much now, but if I just do a little bit of move, look, as I move a little bit, can you see that there? So my face is staying perfectly tracked, but there's a little bit of focus breathing and pulling. It was a lot worse yesterday. So this is why you want a slower, autofocus speed so let me set that back and for this it really does come down to what you want i kept messing around between minus one and minus two and i found minus one is the one that i wanted so it's just like a slower pull it's not going to track me backwards and forwards as well as my sony cameras do but all of my sony cameras one of the reasons it's really done my head in with using autofocus on these even though it's so rapid it is the autofocus speed i'm constantly having moving stuff going on in the background that is why you literally have to put prime lenses on it with the 16 to 50 and the 18 to 105 the zve 10 i've managed to nail it down a little bit but my a6400 um you know i really struggle to, to prevent focus breathing which is what you get from the autofocus speed there so the next one is sensitivity now i see a lot of people saying set this to plus three or plus two from the videos i was watching and i would say yes if you've got the camera on a tripod you've got this sort of big area you're maybe you're recording multiple people or someone's walking around then that is where you want the sensitivity dialed up but i've actually got my sensitivity set to minus two so why have i got it so much slower the problem that i found is with the sensitivity dialed up would be if i turn my head and you can see i'm focused there and then i turn back again it would refocus on one of my eyes the one that wasn't in the scene so i found by having this higher sensitivity like I said, because I'm I'm moving, but I'm static. I don't want it to readjust focus every time I move my head a little bit. 
So I found that actually having the sensitivity dialed up. Again, if you're doing a lot of this, if you're doing a lot of moving around the frame and all of that sort of stuff, if you're walking around and you're really animated, then you want the AF sensitivity turned up. But for doing a talking headpiece, you actually want it toned down because I, I just want that there. I don't want that to refocus when I do that. I just don't want it to move so much. If I come a little bit forward or a little bit back, I don't want it to refocus. And I was constantly noticing it just doing a little bit of hunting around this eye as I would turn my head. If I was talking like that, I'd come back around and then this eye, I just found that it would do a little bit of focusing on it. So those are my focusing settings. And it's weird, isn't it? Because everyone says that like the Panasonics, they're not fast enough. They don't focus fast enough. Why don't they focus as fast enough as Sony cameras? But actually, in certain scenarios, having super fast autofocus isn't very useful. Now, am I probably going to use this in manual and use the app? Most likely. One thing I didn't mention there as well is that because I'm recording out um, into an Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II, that when you're recording out of a HDMI and you've got the app on, you do lose the screen up there. So you don't get like a triple face screen going on. But yeah, really like the look of that. See, just that slower pull. Again, you might decide that you want the AF speed to zero, but I think it's better by doing this, it hunts less. I found that when you drive it up a little bit, so you want it to, you know, go back on straight away when you do that. This is where I'm get, I was getting some hunting. So I had it quite a lot as well with the speed turned right up, the um, the sensitivity. Just occasionally when I would move a little bit, I would just get that one or two second hunt or just that really annoying Panasonic sit here and wait for a minute while it refocuses on you. You might as well just press the shutter button. <laughs> So there you go then. There are all my focusing settings. I hope it's helped you out. Um, for anyone, like I said, probably at the beginning of the video there, if you were cautious about buying this camera, I wouldn't be. Honestly, if you're going to be using it for stuff that I would be doing, fine. Um, if you're maybe doing loads of really fast paced moving scenes, again, I haven't used it outdoors yet, so I wouldn't know, then maybe, yeah, I can understand why you might want to look at maybe like Sony or Canon or someone like that. But the thing is, it's the deal, the deal of how much I pay for this camera, because that is going to really reflect, you know, how I see this camera. And I'm going to tell you about the deal now. So the camera was selling for £1,899 with the 20, no, £1,799 with the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens, which is actually a pretty nice piece of glass. It also was the vlogging kit. So it came with this grip that's worth 80 quid, which I wouldn't say it's worth 80 quid. And it came with an official extra Panasonic battery. These batteries actually roll in somewhere between 80 and 100. So say that's like 150 quid of value. The camera just with the lens was the same price. It was also reduced 300 pounds. So it's 1499 pounds for a camera that can do 4K 60, admittedly with a crop, um, can output like almost 6K raw if you get um, a Ninja 5, not a Ninja 5 Plus which is what I'm looking at getting yet. You know, the, the amount of video features that this camera has is exhaustive, okay? Um, so yeah, all of those features that it's got, just, you know, you can't get that. I, I mean, the, the A7 IV is only really catching up with that, and that's like two and a half grand. So we're already saving a grand there, and we've got some awesome video features. So it's 300 pounds off, 1499. That's not the end of the deal. I got it from Clifton Cameras. I also got this Moza, let me just refocus on camera backpack which is good because i actually needed the camera bag that's worth 100 pounds but i would say it's quite worth that and then also just focus on me it also came with a moser aircross 2 gimbal um which i'm going to sell the gimbal probably because i've already got one but i should get a couple of hundred pounds for that so that's going to bring the camera down to about 12.99 for me out of my Sony cameras that I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep the ZV-E10 because it's got better adjustment of the focusing settings on it. It's almost like the Panic, the S5 that we're using here. And also the A6400 is worth more money because I'm not into the photography. I don't need the viewfinder and all that stuff. Plus it's got headphone output. And then like things like that. That's what I missed when I went over to Sony. Like when I had the A6400, no headphone output, no dual SD card slots, no IBIS, you know. And so I'm going to sell my A6400 and a few of my Sony lenses because this is just going to literally be used with an 18 to 105 for unboxings and that's it. So I think the camera upgrade isn't really costing me that much. I think in the grand scheme of things, by the time everything's gone, this camera probably cost me a couple hundred quid. And I've really enjoying it so far. 
Anyway, that's it from me today. If you like the video, leave a like. If you really like the video, leave a subscribe. Let me know your settings in the description and I'll be back with some more S5 videos very soon.